So the next segment we're looking at is, is our, our smaller units. We've developed uh, 12 units to date uh, that are, range in size from 300 square feet coverage uh, to our larger ones that can do you know, factories of 100,000 square feet depending on what's in it, you know, what you're trying to subdue and take care of. The very first one here is the uh, is a Sanex, uh, one of our more recent units. It's, it only weighs you know, 10 and a bit pounds and it'll do 300 square feet. This is the unit of choice that I use when I travel because it goes in overnight bag. Um, like I said, it's only 10 pounds. Uh, I throw my pillow in there, that goes on top. I throw some socks and jeans and a jacket and that's it, zips up. And it has logged thousands and thousands of miles. Benefit is when you go in a hotel room, it, you have, as we discussed earlier, your airspace. You're not at the mercy of whatever that, you know, that wall-mounted unit that is just full of spore activity and odors and stuff. You don't have that. Uh, whatever was spilled on the carpeting, which you know they're trying to cover up with a, a masking agent, is if it's there, it'll be gone. You just leave it in there for a couple hours, then you've already turned over the worst part of it, and it continues to clean and do its thing. So you will get a great nice sleep because it returns bioavailable oxygen to your, your, uh, your area. Um, uh, gosh, and even if you're on a trade show, which happens quite often, you get like four, five, maybe six hours sleep at the most, you wake up refreshed, like you can rip trees out of the ground with one hand. It's a really wonderful feeling. It's, it's very much akin to sleeping outdoors in a tent. You, at sunrise, give me an ax, I need to chop something. It's a very robust feeling. Uh, very good to your skin uh, because it is an antioxidant. So you're being bathed in that. So the face creams that, sorry to tell you this ladies, but chemically the OH, because you're, you're using, um, it's called an alpha hydroxy cream. Hydroxies are the chemical form of hydroxyl and they're active on your skin for about three and a half minutes and then they're neutralized. In other words, the activity has gone dormant. Uh, with us, you're producing trillions of these guys and they're scrubbing and cleaning and they're, you know, they're, they're uh, donating energy to your skin. So that's why you tend to look better. You've got uh, more oxygen getting to you so the cheeks kind of go a little more pinky like, the, you know, like young children. Uh, all those good things happen, which is what you need when you travel. Because at home you're in control of your environment, when you travel you're not. Now for the first time you are, you can take it with you. So a smaller unit can be put in an RV, you can put it in your, uh, an inverter in your car so you're not breathing everybody else's tailpipe on long trips, that type of thing. Go in your cabin, uh, your cubicle. Um, so it's handy to tote, it's only 10 pounds as I mentioned. So a very versatile little guy uh, and it's of course restricted to a smaller space. It's bigger brother here, the slimline unit, uh, is, uh, well, we kind of wanted to use it with, uh, on shipboard. Uh, but it'll do a 1,500 square feet. So for a few dollars more, with about four times the square footage. It's a little heavier, 17 pounds. And uh, um, it's a configuration, lamp configuration that we're using in, uh, in, uh, in hospitals because it's very handy in long-term care facilities because you can snug up against the wall. It looks like it belongs there. Um, it's, it's a really nice, nice bang for the buck. It's a great all-around unit. And, uh, you know, it's a good seller for us. You, you will get a lot of good use out of that. And like I said, it can go into you know, larger type thing. well, uh, things that are movable like you know, your RV um, uh, in your cabin and something like that will be just what you need. Or if you've got a property that you're going to be going into, just put, put it in there and walk away. Come back in a week and everything's just beautiful. You don't have to you know, quote unquote air it out. This one here is a duct unit. And what I mean by that is that uh, you just put a little uh, insert a little uh, hole there about the size of a toaster that would slip inside there and so when your HVAC system is running it's able to uh, simultaneously do all areas of your home at the same time which is beautiful so in other words instead of toting it from room to room you know you've got an air pathway as we mentioned earlier mechanical air movement is, is very efficient and it's balanced so you've got the same sort of pressure ratios in each room and so this will deliver that along with that it'll piggyback into that system so you've got as we mentioned earlier a functional immune system now to your building. It's not just moving air, it's delivering something that's able to subdue bacteria, virus, fungal spores, and your chemicals that are outgassing from everything that's there, including what's being brought in from out of doors, which at times may not be very nice. So uh, I've been in the largest for forest fire that ever happened in, uh, uh, in our area, and 65,000 people were evacuated. You could not see even the outline of the house across the street, and yet I had asthmatic sting in my home who didn't have to use their puffer was remarkable. You stood outside for a second, you were choking, you walked inside and it was like an oasis. Quite dramatic. And it was a large home with 5,000 square feet and one of those units did a great job there. Um, so 
uh, a wonderful unit. So as it says here, medical, clinical, institutional, hazmat, veterinary, hospital use, very versatile. I just want to go back to the, this. We don't have the slide yet for this, but we've done a, a hybrid off of the, the Sanex. It's called a flush mount. And we've devised that. Currently, it's in, in uh, ambulances. So it, it's a, we developed, actually, the unit for the very first self-sanitizing ambulance. And uh, several of these have already been sold and put in there. Uh, it's not solely for that purpose, but it's made that you can put it inside a wall. So if you had a uh, travel home, travel trailer, um, a cabin or something, uh, it could just be inserted. And that's it, wired internally. And uh, you're good to go. It's always there. So it's just another option for that one. We just don't have that side prepared yet. So it's called a uh, flush mount. Uh, next unit is the one that uh, we did all the testing on and continue to do the testing on. That's the MDU, Mobile Disinfection Unit. And uh, it's a great workhorse. It's designed to run uh, in a populated area full time, uh, as opposed to the ones we're going to look at next, which are like get in there, get it done, and, and we're out of there. So um, this at one of our lower producing hydroxyl units is more than capable, as you saw in the, in the slides, of handling the bacteria, the virus, and the fungal spores. And uh, of course, with the, our bigger units, we can provide that service a little more quickly. But this is, this is the unit that we do all the tests on. And uh, a lot of us have these in our homes and our cubicles right now. We really like this unit. This is one of the uh, commercial units. They're, they're brown in color. And we call it contractor series. And they're known by the word boss. Uh, I think it's because we like Springsteen at the time, so we thought it was a good, good thing to put on there. But when the boss shows up, stuff gets done. And uh, that's why we like these units. That um, they're used uh, mainly in, in, uh, in, in the uh, for the, uh, the contractors that are doing restoration. So when you go fire and flood, sewer backup, uh, hazmat situations, you're dealing with a death scene. These are the units that you would use. So this one's 35 pounds, so it's it's very carry carryable, carryable, portable, <laughs> and. And also the, uh, the next one, that it's a little lighter, but it's got, uh, this one has two optics, the next one has three. Uh, this would be more of a concentrator, so if you had, let's say, a smoke or odor blowing into, let's say, um, and, and this was f fairly good size here for uh, an ensuite, uh, you could put that in there and you wouldn't have to take the clothes and then take them to the dry cleaners, because people don't like that, because inevitably something gets lost or torn or something happens, they just want their stuff to stay in their place. So you would close the door, put the unit in there, and overnight, boom, done, finished. So it's very handy for that. Or, or if you're going to put up a zip wall, and you could just put plastic up the ceiling and then dirty stuff over there. On this side would be the Odorox machine, and you put all your delicates in here that you don't want to take off site. Very handy unit for that type of work. This next one is the one I was alluding to. It has three optics in it, but requires a blower. So it's on a vacuum switch. So when you snug them together, uh, the uh, the the whole system just takes off and you can handle the on the previous one 250 to 500 cubic feet per minute this one up to 4,000 cubic feet so it really moves a lot of air so if you get a, a flood situation or water damage situation you're going to move a lot of air therefore you're going to start the drying process is going to happen immediately and as you're drying you're also going to get address the bugs so as soon as your your water table starts to rise in, in relative humidity and you hit anything over 40 which is 40 percent is sub fairly substantial, but then you start creeping towards 100 and over, you're going to get bacteria doubling every 20 minutes. You're going to have mold that's going to take off where you've never seen it before and virus. So most of the guys that have these will install them or I'll let them run before the guys come in for tear out because you want to be able to control bacteria and virus and fungal spores. And as they're tearing out sheetrock and pulling out carpeting, you don't want to take in big lungs of stuff that's going to hurt you. And quite often, I've experienced this myself, I could not work the next day, and I'm a workhorse. I love to work. And that just dropped me. You just can't work in that environment. You're just physically wiped, you have to recover. So uh, instead of losing your best guys and your best team for a period of time, run this uh, before the guys go in for tear out, and they're gonna, the job will be done quicker because they can breathe better and they can, they can work the whole day very solidly. They're great workhorses. They're made to get the job done, pay me, and leave. And the nice thing is that you don't come back because the mold, if you leave it in for four days, the colony's gone, and also the spore activity's been neutralized. So that's the big thing with contractors that are doing restoration. They get called back, you miss something. Or why is the, was the basement handled or the first floor, but now I've got mold on the second floor. So it's gonna decontaminate that whole area that it's in.
So it's a really, really work well. The guys have used it for such a long time, just love it because no comebacks. Job's done, leave, paid. This is uh, the other duct unit, but this one comes with a fan, so it's not dependent on your, uh, your, uh, your uh, HVAC fan or your AC fan. It, uh, it puts out around, uh, well, I see that 630 CFM, so it's got a nice flow to it. It's enough to just move a hanky or a Kleenex in front of your vent system, but it's delivering all the time at that rate. And so your house is always being looked after. So the previous induct would run on your, your, your fan switch, was somewhere between four and 5,000 CFM. And if you wanted to be a little more energy conservation-ish, then you could put this one in there. And that's one certified for duct. So it's got a round entry and a round discharge at six inches. So it's easy to install. I know I've installed a lot of them. This is one of our newer units. And this HRC06 room curtain has a lot of uses. Uh, if you've got if you're a facilities manager and you want to control the odors that are coming from your garbage bins, this will do it. You don't have to resort to AC to cool the air so that the bacteria proliferation is less. This will pay for the AC charge. That's how efficient this is. And because it will keep away the bugs and, and uh, the, the roaches and flies and things and pests, you're not going to get those tickets. You know, the health department comes by when you happen to open up the door to take the trash out. And they go, I smell that and here's your $1,200 ticket. Uh, this becomes very valuable very quickly. Uh, we were talking earlier about uh, food distribution. If you want to take care of the bins that are there, um, this is perfectly suited to that. In a smaller area, we've got larger units which we can uh, look at. But this one works really well in nice areas like 20 by 20. You're just, you've got your, your vegetables and your fruits that you've picked, harvested, and you're waiting for the big truck to bring them in. They will keep them in pristine condition and make sure that you know, any pests are not going to know that it's there. We run these in our homes, there's no fruit flies. You could have, as I have, I've got a number of mango trees. I put 40 pound and a half mangoes on the kitchen table to ripen, not one fruit fly. You could leave it there for weeks and they don't even know it's there. That's how effective this is in breaking up those odors that call you know, the bugs in that it's feeding time. So that's a very versatile unit. All right, this is uh, the M MVP series. And now we're getting into computer controlled and data logging and all kinds of wonderful stuff. But when we're doing hog barns, the one on the bottom, that's the actual unit. The, one, the piece above is the, uh, is the controller. Uh, 400 hogs odorless in two and a half hours. And that's sitting on a pit that's you know, three, four feet deep with, you know, with nasty stuff in there. And uh, within that period of two and a half hours, I could smell the grain that they were eating. It was amazing, and I detected a slight cherry scent, and I said, well, where's that coming from? No one's here chewing on a hulls or anything. And I said, well, that's the cough syrup suppressant that we put in the, uh, in the grains to keep the animals from coughing because they're breathing in all this ammonia gas, and they cough, and it hurts the ribs, and they, they, they can't eat, and then they lose weight. So it got it so clean that I was able to detect that. The dander vanished within a day and a half, which was startling. We thought it was grain dust. When we learned it was dander, we, were, we didn't like that too much. But it impacted positively on their health and, of course, the odor because uh, you're going to have issues. So if you can handle something that's that nasty, doing you know, food bins or doing uh, uh, you know, a, a dentist's office where you, you inject this into the, the air moving system is, is a piece of cake. So, to provide, so that it always runs efficiently, it's being monitored by the, uh, by the control system. And we have a set point, so let's say the OSHA limit, and same as Health Canada, is, is 0 0.1 parts per million. We can put it at 0 0.05, half of OSHA or half of Health Canada, and that's more than enough energy to handle everything. So if there's a drift of bad air coming in, we sense the, 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 the loss of hydroxyl use, and it'll just sense that and ramp it up so it keeps it at that even line. So you can verify that. Uh, you know, we've got data links that we can transmit that to any data, any laptop in the country anywhere you need it, so if you need to check on it. So we've also, and somebody from a health department said, what's going on? Here you go, here's the locks. This is how we're controlling that. And everything's gonna be fine. Then we do your swabs, you find out that the bacteria is in the tens instead of the thousands, which is sterile. When it's in the tens, that's exactly what you're looking for. So we realize that there's areas that are gonna be very nasty, and it's hard to you know, monitor that with a just straight on and off unit. So when it, the bacteria or the odors go up, we handle it, and then it brings it right back into that really nice even flow that we're looking for. This is a, a bigger version and a very intelligent piece of work and uh, 
Um, that's what we use at breweries or in uh, food manufacturing and, and the beverage industry. It's a workhorse. It is a tremendous workhorse, and it's called the MVP 48. And if I just might add to why we call it MVP, even though we think it's the most valuable player, it's called the, the um, Molt. Help me out here, Mark. I got a. I drew a oh, blank. <laughs> you know, I I named that unit. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about the, uh, the going back to Leeds University. They when they figured out that hydroxyl was doing the cleaning of the atmosphere, they, they created a paper that was called the Master um, uh, Chemical Mechanism uh, because the hydroxyl was taking care of all these chemicals. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great if we had a master VOC processor? And that's what this is, the master. When this gets turned on, those chemicals are neutralized. And it is a powerful piece of equipment, very efficient. And again, it has data logging capabilities and we can work through the cell phone networks and and Mark will monitor that and, and just make sure that everything's running at top. So that is a wonderful piece of equipment. And of course, those last two on the MVP series, that would be something that you'd call us on. We'd need to do an engineering review and, and what their needs are and, and you know, permitting. There was, it's actually quite a long kind of process when you're trying to figure out where that would fit. But we have that capability, again, to go from very small, 300 square feet, put it in your cubicle, all the way up to plants that could be 500,000 square feet and very nasty odors. And I think that gets us to the end of the units. And then for the smaller ones, just to help, because all these names won't be familiar to you, uh, we have a square footage guideline. And uh, so we've said the max that it can handle, the maximum recommended area for all the units that we've talked about. And then when it's got under load, of course, that's going to diminish. So. Um, it gives us a real good rule of thumb until such a time as you become very familiar with them and you don't have to look at it anymore. We don't, uh, but to give it to someone that's new, it, it explains an awful lot. And that when you've got a lot of uh, chemical that's in the air to deal with, uh, it'll show that uh, you need to bring another unit. And then it's going to work just fine. So if I had smoke blowing into this room, I would use one unit, no problem. But if it had been smoked in continuously by husband and wife for 15 years, I'd have to double up and I'd have to go minimum of maybe 10 days to subdue it. But it can be done. And we've gone after those odors after the walls have been washed with TSP, trisodium phosphate, sealed, shellacked, painted with aluminum paint, and then they call us and say, it's still bleeding out. Not the color, but I, the odors are still there. At that point, we go in and the hydroxyl being very small, hydrogen the smallest element in the universe, oxygen number eight, can go. If it can come out, we're going in. So they've got a, in size, a basketball going out, and we've got a little you know, ball bearing going in, but with a lot of dynamic energy, enough to take it apart. So it will happen. And the only alternative would be to take the whole room apart, sheetrock, ceiling, floors, everything. So that's not an option for a lot of people.